prime the best move for white. This is a 5 plus 3 blitz game. 1700s. The rating is hidden as usual until we try and find the solution. Find the best move for white. Okay, instantly drawn there, but obviously the bishop can take. And can't go here because the king can take. So their king looks like it's in some sort of mating situation. Does look like the knight can come here and put a check on the king. That looks like a more forcing move, forcing the king to do something. King can't go there, it can't go here, it can't go there. The only square it can go is here. So if it goes there, you'd think that. Do we have another piece that can actually go? Oh, if it goes there, we get the rook off the ball because there's a fork here. Is it a material gathering thing? Looks like it potentially is. That's what we're looking to do. Uh, only got one square to go here. And we are up the exchange. That doesn't necessarily mean you're winning the game though, because he's going to get it back because the rook takes the knight. But the computer thinks that when you um, up the exchange that you're actually winning. In my head, it's not necessarily the case. It depends on your position on the board. So I, w I would go with this one for the computer's sake. Goes there, and then we're getting the rook off the board. Is there a checkmate from there, though? Let's see. Check goes here. Ooh, there is, isn't there? There is. So you go there, the king goes there, then the rook can take the pawn because the knight is protecting that area and the king has no squares to go to. It can't come back here. So that's a checkmate. And we will bring this here. Nice one. Ten and door. Let's push through the center. See what this uh, session's got for us today. Let's just develop the knight and let's push through the center here. Obviously, let's just grab and let's just develop the bishop. Get ready to bring the bishop back in readiness for this. So shall we put a check on the king first? And we may not bring the bishop back now then, so let's just castle. We're thinking of going here, but it's going to be fast enough to actually protect. So let's just bring the bishop here. And let's get the knight out. Looking to target this pawn. I think we will target this pawn now. Always trying to get rid of the center pawns if we can. Just to make some space. Does take. Let's challenge the bishop. Do we take with the queen or the knight? It's going to take with the knight, I think, because it's got a bit of dance ability. No, I was just going to say, <laughs> I thought the rook was going to come here to be opposite, but he's attacking our bishop, so let's take. Still do have dance ability in terms of attacking the knight. Let's continue with that motion. Not interested, and where is he looking to go? Maybe here, maybe there. Shall we stop that action or just go opposite to there? Opposite their queen. Yep, let's go opposite the queen. And looks like they've got something set up. Are they looking to challenge our queen? Not that way, this way. Yep. So should we move the queen out of the way? Could be coming to attack this pawn as well. I'm going to move the queen out of the way. Obviously I'm going to have to move opposite their king because the rook is going to be x-raying through. Yep. So I'm going to move the queen, like we've just said, opposite the king. Don't need to move this fast and I feel myself falling into narration mode too quickly. Right, so can move the knight. Can't attack their knight because the queen's no longer defending there. 
could sacrifice pawn pawn but it's not a very good position so i think we'll just bring the knight back here potential for jumping across maybe obviously that's um an obvious maneuver so we've slowed down so we're probably looking to try and go for some sort of trade their queens probably maybe looking to attack us or come off here so that he links the rooks up yeah exactly he's coming off so he's linking the rooks up and can we not at this moment we could come here double, does double our pawns I'm going to hit the rook basic chess and take brief moment of owning the file so the queen can come here put a check on the king try and get the queen off the board I think they're going with that so momentarily owning the file but do we get trapped so the queen has king has come down so we're probably just going to come back here yep let's come here so we're in the intricacies of the end game I'm going to take and let's have a look at the pawn structures we've got a split pawn here so we're having to babysit this pawn so now it's probably looking to come in and attack or here and attack so maybe just push this pawn it's just that it does give them access to here and attacking this pawn as well there's a lot of things going on in this position we we'll bring our knight across maybe to look to start doing some activities here but is it really meaty enough maybe a king move and see what the knights are wanting to do yep so they're in attacking this pawn which is protected by the knight and what else is that knight move really doing making space for the pawns coming down all right so we could hit the knight obviously it's just going to say well i'm coming here i'm blocking this pawn anything else move the king a little bit further up potential for getting hit hit move the king further up well, i think that is making yeah exactly it's made space for this pawn pushing down doesn't look like they've got anything clear so i'm going to attack the knight and see if there's an exchange potential they're thinking so they're probably not going to do so they want to be a little bit confusing maybe bringing the knight back here yeah exactly they're thinking too much which is a good thing for us and we can't go here until we go here but that's going to be blocked off by their pawns or the oh the knight even if we did do that we double the pawns because his knight is there it's a shame we don't have a pawn here <clears throat> right so we can jump the knight in here or we could jump it here or in the center probably the center is a little bit better but he is attacking this pawn with his knight so we probably have to defend it but we can't defend it with this only piece that can defend it is this knight but it's blocking the pawn so we'd have to come back to where we started just to defend the pawn trying not to over egg anything they may decide to start pushing this pawn to stop this knight from coming here so they can take this pawn is there a reshuffle knight here to here but it's blocking this pawn and the king's blocking this way so it's going backwards and forwards so maybe they're looking for a draw but i doubt it i mean they've got these pawns here can we shuffle our king across to make space i'm going to bring the knight around again see if there's any way of squeezing in They're thinking so they're not going for a draw this time they're thinking we've got something i believe they have something and we don't really have a dynamic damn yeah so the king's move now so what do we want to be doing 
something's telling me. I don't think the knights are any good there, really. We'll push the pawn up. <clears throat> this knight can come here. Let's push this pawn. Momentarily protected by the knight. Very flimsy, very flimsy. The king's getting closer into the action, looking to take the pawn. Let's just support this pawn for now. He's squeezing in, trying to come round the back. Let's move the king. Does he have a check on our king? Not from this one. We do have a check on his king with a bit of tempo pushing. Let's put a check on the king. So we can push this and put a check on the king. All right, everything's getting locked down, so we may as well come with a small potato move. His knight's got a little outpost here. But our knight is there at the minute. So at some point he's got to be challenging these, but this pawn here because it is isolated and it doesn't have any protection at the minute. And our king is blocking the way for the knight coming here. So we have to come here, which is blocking our paw, which we didn't really want to do. Yep, so he's going to be getting rid of our knight, but we can put our pawn here. It's just that now this knight can come here. Luckily our knight is protecting for the moment. So we can move the knight back out of the way. And maybe try something. Let's bring the knight out of the way. I'm gonna get taken, get taken. Doubles his pawns, but does that improve his position? Let's go with this. So we do have space, <coughs> excuse me, with the knight. But if we go there, then he does have this. So I think we're just going to push the pawn. Oh, the pawn majority that we talked about. So if we pushed here, we can push down. Takes, knight takes, knight takes, and the pawn is coming down. But yeah, mm. so we could push. He does attack. We can take. If his knight does take, I don't think they will. And we take, then we're kind of covering this pawn going down. I don't think they'll do that. I think they'll do something else. Push. So maybe we, maybe. very tense nobody's going for a draw so king across can't even get to here but we can attack the knight knight takes king takes but then we're kind of jammed in aren't we because then his king just drops here and then we're kind of in zugzang zugzwang world because the king can't then move from this spot mm. let's move the king time is running out we're obviously not going for the exchange with the knight so he's doing a dance attack the pawn king comes down king goes up I don't think the king's going to do that though. I think he'll come back and attack the knight because they're winning, winning that position, aren't they? We move the king across. He just comes back again with the knight. We attack the knight. Takes, king takes. Then he's got this situation. <laughs> attack the pawn. Obviously, he's protecting. We're not going to be able to push this, are we? 
We're thinking of if we can push this onto here, but then it pushes onto the knight. Let's bring the knight in here. I'm not sure if the king going there would have helped. They're moving very quick though. Oh shit, Aki mushrooms. Same situation I was trying to avoid as well. Oh, that was silly, dude. I could have just hung the king around here or something, couldn't I? Oh. Yeah, we're getting sug swanged with these pawns. Bring the king here. He takes. We take. King drops. Yeah, it's the same damn situation. We push. He just takes. Oh. Okay. I'm not doing it that way. But it's not going to make any difference. So I'm thinking if he takes, which is, oh, he's not doing. If we take there, back in that same situation again. So move the knight. 37 seconds. Oh. Move the knight. We don't really want to do any captures. We want them to try and overextend. They're maybe doing something. I don't know. Or maybe they're just moving the king across. But we don't have enough time now to do anything. He can just jump in here. Well, he can't at the moment because he'll get taken. He's pushing, he's pushing, he's pushing. Take. Hit the knight. Can jump here safely. <laughs> Ten seconds. What can you do in five seconds? Not a lot. Ah. Hey, let's have a look at the analysis on that. Draw. Hey, draw, 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 draw. Just wasn't fast enough. Hmm. Yeah, you find games like these. Hmm. Okay, let's see if there was any. Any advantages or major disadvantages in this game? What did we miss? Still equalish. Righty. Still equalish all the way through, apart from this bit here, maybe. Slightest of advantages, but it's neither here nor there. Drawish all the way through, really. Hmm. 
Hmm. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. What did we miss? H5. Oh, that's not us. That move was wrong. Knight takes b4. So we should have taken. Oh, we did take. Oh, it's saying king e3. So we should have moved the king at that point. The delicacies of end games. Delicacies of end games. Oh, how am I meant to know that? Let me see. We just block it. We're stopping the knight from jumping in here, but it's already got protection there, so we didn't really need to panic. And if they did push, then we'd be able to take. So yeah, in my brain, I'm thinking, oh, let's just um, stop the knight from jumping in here. But that slowed that down. We needed to get the king into the action. And it's actually even with the pawns. It's just that ours is split. King e3. Hmm. And say human, they move their king across as well. King d3. So it's making its way over to help support. And that's saying h5. But let's say this because it's a human, based on what the way they played. Say they move their king across. Yep. Right. Knight e4 now. Knight e4. So now it's going for exchanging the knight. Because the king is able to support these pawns. But this type of player probably wouldn't have exchanged. They so say knight e8. I don't know if they would have gone away from the fight though. I think they would have stayed in, the, in here somewhere. Yeah, so humanity type thing. Stay, stay there. Knight takes f6. Ooh, there's this pawn. Right, okay. So maybe they would have spotted that and defended. Maybe they would have done. Yep. King c4. That's us. Oh, so we can make our way up. And if this did drop, we can take and take. Oh, very smooth. Very smooth. Yeah, I like that. Smallest of details, right, yeah. That was the bit that let us down a bit, I think. I don't think there's anything else after that, really. Yeah. Knight takes b4, which we did do. But then it's the follow on. Just thinking, yeah, keeping the pawns linked up natural state of mindset i think i'd struggle to do that king move even now i know it's the smallest of details it's just when you put in the throws of a game pawns a little bit se um, separated so bringing this pawn here to support it is the natural flow for my brain but that's protected by the knight if they did drop we'd be able to take it's not really going to be coming here because we can push past. Then we have to look at the board and say, well, can the king come across and support? We did actually have that thought of bringing the king across at some point. It's a bit late to the party though, wasn't it? So we're pushing the pawns. Now we're bringing the king across. But then we looked at him and thought, we're going to get Zugzwang, aren't we? So it's not a very good... Oh, hold on, there was something. Knight takes d6. What did I miss? What do you mean? Where's d6? Oh, takes this. Takes the knight. Oh, I thought I was in Zugzwang's situation again then. Because if we go c4, then does he not just do a dance? King e5, it's saying King e5. I'm thinking the only piece I'm going to move is this, but it just gets taken. Oh, but we take this pawn and then we're ramping the pawn up. Oh, damn! 
Oh, pushing this here. If it takes, then we take this, and then there's no stopping the pawn. I suppose he's pushing here to try and get his pass pawn. It's saying take, and it's not worried about this b3. What? d6? It's not worried about the speed of this. Give it up. b7. Oh, this is gonna hurt, isn't it? Oh. And then he's putting checks on. I don't like that. King b6. Is it saying it's safe? Queen a3. No, human's gonna be keeping putting checks on all the time. They're not going to do anything that doesn't put a check on, so they'll be putting checks on. C6. They'll just constantly be putting checks on, so I'm just doing what a human would do. I'm not going to do a waiting move. They're going to constantly want putting checks on. King D7. And he's going to try and get the pawn off the ball, but he's... Yeah, there we go. Yeah. E7. Takes the pawn. That's in Queen A7 check. Yeah, so it's not going to take, but he's going to put a check on. Queen D7. Queen C C5 check. Yeah, just constant checks. Probably going to escape though. King F7. Queen A5. No, Queen C2 now. Yeah, it's run out of the checks. It's run out of the checks and that's the advantage type thing. Eek. Bit tense though. Oh, night taking. Oh, man. This is a nice learning game for me. Look at that. We talked it through, but we were just putting ourselves in a Zugzwang situation. We put ourselves... We, we were saying, oh, takes, and then they take, and then we go here. And then I'm thinking... I wasn't actually thinking them coming here. I was thinking, did they not just go backwards and forwards? And where do we go? The only piece I'm going to move is this, and it's saying there's nothing wrong with that move. Because if they take, we take, and we've got the... Oh! It's beautiful when you see it. Very good learning game. Nice one. Okay, this puzzle is a 3-0 and blitz game versus... 2400 and a 2300 and find the best move for white white is the 2400 best move for white let's have a look at the situation any pressure on the king or the king area or pieces around the king queen could go for an exchange but obviously it's not going to be that simple is there any forcing moves in terms of putting pressure on the king? Is there like magical moves where you take this pawn, the rook takes, and then this rook goes in the back here and puts some sort of checkmate on? I think it looks like that, you know. Yep. So the, the ridiculous moves, yep. It looks like it is the actual move. Check. It's got a check on the king, so they have to do something about it. If it did move across, then we'd take, and it would be an instant checkmate. So the rook has to take, and then the, because this rook is here, we can come down and basically get a mate, because the rook has to come back, then this rook can go here, and it's checkmate. Wow. So we got the ridiculous move out of the way first, and it is actually the answer in this game. So then we just go here. And then we can take, or we can take, don't matter. Now, the thing for me is, which move is the right move? Because he could go here like this. Can anything interject? 
or you could go like this so you could use either one of them but which one did the computer choose yeah that's the thing I don't personally think it makes a difference which one you take with because it's mate he's not getting out of there but if I choose the wrong one maybe we just go safe and go here because this rook is holding the back but it don't make no difference okay that'll work nice one and the actual rating sorry yep the rating is 1485 for this puzzle solution again 2400 2300 this was a 2400 who actually did this maneuver and this rating for this puzzle is classed as 1400 so you don't have to have some high level type of thinking in terms of your pattern recognition in order to beat anybody in a game of chess the positions are usually there for you it's whether or not you see it and take advantage of it okay 10 and 0 see if we can build on the practices that we've been learning recently doesn't look like this opponent starting maybe i took too long starting nope okay i don't have time for that let's just find another opponent push in the center the difficulty with chess is that you do so much learning you've got you gathered so much experience under your belt and yet there's still things to learn constantly all the time constantly learning constantly practicing what you find familiar for yourself i like to obliterate the center if it's possible and let's just bring the bishop out make space for castling but gives them something to think about he can leave it there he doesn't need to do anything a class that has the bad bishop so if he does leave it there we can take and let's bait a pawn and then just bring the bishop back oh let's take the bishop off the board thank you so yeah developing your own style your own system your own method your own way of dealing with chess that i think that's the enjoyment for me as i've been playing for so many years and there's no rush to achieve anything within chess i just love enjoying the playing the game of uh, let's just bring the rook here don't mind them taking this bishop either it's looking like it's going to end up being bad and he's not wanting to give his good knight up for a bad bishop in those sense i'm going to bring the knight out so we've got pieces developed and they get tired of the knight sitting here although it's a good position for the knight in the center but obviously once this pawn is hitting it it has to make a decision do i give my good knight up for what looks like a perceived bad bishop let's hit the knight does bring our rook into the center of the board and as we know rooks don't have any place in the center of the board unless of course it's to your benefit it does mess up the tempo when it's getting attacked and yes they're not giving up their good bishop good knight for a bad bishop so we can hit their bishop bishop goes back don't think it's got anywhere else to go we could hit the knight again just to say well what are you actually doing but let's hit the knight giving them something to think about with a smaller piece obviously coming back to a nice position again here okay let's move the rook it's attacking this pawn it's attacking the queen so we've given up a pawn but it is a single attack which doesn't really have much support so in my head i'm thinking that's fine but you're not even castled really and you're coming greedy munching for pawns not doing that just yet it's attacking the bishop which is protected maybe they've lost a bit of tempo in terms of the knight being able to take he does have pieces on here but we have pieces protecting so they're doing some sort of fried liver type reversal situation where they're taking the pawn it's 
So I'm hoping that they've missed tempo in terms of gathering a piece there, you know, with the knight. Where was the knight going to go though after it did take that? But hey, as if our queen did come here, it's going to be looking to try and escape. Going here, we can take with a check on the king. So it's finally taken. Let's take with the pawn. And the knight moves out of the way and we take the knight off the board. So it looks like we're gaining material from this um, move order of things. Queen could come here attacking the bishop and attacking the pawn. So they'll probably just take the knight off the board. Knight is supported by the rook and the, and the knight. So it seems to happen fairly quickly in terms of move orders and then protecting the bishop, which is okay. So we can move the knight or we can just hit the bishop and see what it actually wants to do. Probably just wants to explode and open up the space in front of the king, but I think we've got enough protection. Or do they just go for the capture? The queen's got no support for attacking further our queen, king, sorry. Maybe the queen's, it's queen side castling, getting the rook onto this pawn. So he's got two on one here. The bishop moves, knight can take, but it's got that annoying thing of being bringing this pawn here. It's just that he's blocking the queen. Rook is looking to challenge down here. I think we can trade. And then we can attack the queen. But I think the queen is going to go across here looking to attack this pawn. The rook is defending at the minute. So I think we'll go and hit this rook first, taking the pawn. And there's access to their king for a check. Oh, we didn't see that working out that way, did we? But let's just bring the queen here, king here. It's a single attack, which I'm not too sure. So now it's attacking, but the queen will get taken. They're moving a bit quick now, so I'm hoping they're going to make a mistake. I'm going to put a check on the king. Blocked with the rook. Knight can come and attack the queen. Queen can come down and attack the rook. Probably what they're going to do, isn't it? All right, so. Let's bring this rook here for now. Play safe potatoes. They're supporting the rook, so maybe giving us time to come and attack the queen. Attack the pawn. The diagonal seems to be covered by the queen. So there's no checks from their queen. Does have a pawn that he can take. Doesn't go for the pawn just yet. So if we attack the queen and he goes for the pawn, we can get the rook. But if he goes for the pawn, we just take the queen off the board. Oof. Tunnel vision. So just trying to give them things to think about as we constantly trying to improve our position on the board. Queen's gone into little cubby holes protecting the pawn here, but it does release the protection for the rook, as we mentioned. Excellent. Quick look at the analysis on that one, just to make sure that it's it felt as smooth. It felt smooth, but we like to look at the analysis to see if it was as smooth as we thought it was. So we're just attacking the knight, constantly putting pressure on the opponent to give them things to think about. We go for the exchange. We castle for king safety, and then bring the bishop out, just supporting the pawn. And bring the rook across, supporting the bishop. And developing the knight now so that we can attack their knight with the pawn, making space, and also managing the center as best possible. I bring the knight down again, giving them something to think about. And at this point here, yeah, I thought they were kind of 
advantageous because of the night maneuver that they made because they were attacking our rook but the computer saying no that's um that's fine let's just go back one go back here and it's saying rook f1 so it's basically saying don't bring the rook into the center as so we're just thinking about protecting the bishop aren't we so let's just think now maybe reframe our mindset because we do get caught in a few of these situations and then we em we end up just either bringing the rook a little bit into the center and our mantra says don't put it in the center so i think i can work with this one we don't need to do that just bring the rook here in my head though during the game i'm thinking why well, it's just going back to where it started and it's like doesn't look dynamic because now it's not in play so now the knight can take the pawn but it's the computer's not suggesting taking the pawn because i believe it's something to do with this aspect the knight's going to get trapped let me just run through what i'm talking about and then the queen b3 here like this so it's attacking the knight where does the knight actually go it's going to get taken no matter what yeah so that's why they didn't take there so it's not a good position for them after all when you're playing like a quick game you know this rapid thing yeah your brain can play tricks on you you think oh this is ideal so yeah we didn't need to do that move we could have should have just done the rook f1 still struggling now with my brain thinking oh i'm just going back here i want to get into the game but it really kind of goes against our mantra so yeah rook f1 would have been better fair enough and they bring their knight down and we bring the queen attacking the knights so i'm looking for major dips as we know grabbing it didn't feel like we made anything majorly wrong here so they gave up that pot rook yep so that's fine fairly smooth game Okay, this puzzle is between 1800 and 1900. And it is a 10 minute rapid game. The find the best move for black. So this is the move for the 1900. The rating is hidden as usual. So we find the solution. Find the best move for black. Okay, so instantly just drawn to doing this because that's like a checkmate. <laughs> Surely. I don't think there's anything um, complicated about that as far as I can see. Because the king can't move there. So it's pretty straightforward, isn't it? Let's just make sure I'm not falling into any, any traits. But realistically, I think it's just taking here, isn't it? That's very simple. Yeah. All right, fair enough. And rating for this puzzle is 1306 okay but you know if you're in the throes of a game sometimes you may miss little things like these and it might look so simple i'm sat here chuckling thinking well this looks easy but when you're in the throes of the game and you feel like you're getting put under pressure you can miss these simple types of um solutions in your own games okay ten and oh Let's attack the pawn. As usual, just hit in the center, try and explode the pawns. Let's just grab. <clears throat> this could be one of those scrappy games if they bring the bishop here, but they're not doing so, that's fine. Let's take the queen. And this is the opening that i said i'm doing differently i'm not going to do it the same way i've done before ah but we'll take the pawn because they've not actually taken with the king so that's fine so my rationale behind it was is that um, it tends to give them a little bit of an advantage and you don't actually see it coming if they you know take with the king bringing the bishop out and stuff like that you know attacking this pawn it kind of gives them a bit of an advantage weird, weirdly all right so what we got let's develop the bishop supporting the knight so this should be fairly straightforward now we're in end game the beginning part of the end game 
got a fork here, but he's just going to take the knight off the board and then we'll lose the pawn. Yeah, so let's go here, supporting the pawn. So the opening to the mid into the end game. Now the queens are off the board. This is the top end of the end game. We can get so confused with thinking the end game is when you know you've already got like a few pawns on the board but now my mindset is well how do we end this game their king is in the center our king is in the center we can castle and they can castle i don't know if that was a mistake maybe they moved the wrong piece for castling queenside castling It does look like they probably moved the wrong piece and didn't move the king. But you know, that might be a method in their madness. I'm going to attack the knight. Obviously, not attacking this because the bishop's protecting. Let's take this knight off the board. Can't go there because the pawn's going to be taking, or the bishop's taking, whichever. Let's attack the rook. Mindful, the knight's going to be jumping in at some point. We'll have a check on the king, but we'll keep that in the back pocket. He's moved it out of the way. Let's take. See if we can get some more pieces off the, off the board. So now we're in the middle part of the end game, in a sense. I think knowing what part of the journey you're in can help with the decisions that you make. So we're not going to take with that one because obviously the pawn is under threat from the bishop. So the bishop's a long range. Probably maybe just keep them sat on the back until they overextend. Now it's probably dancing around. And the intricacies now of this end game. This is where many, many people would just offer a draw. It's tucking the pawn here and could let it take it because if we did push something like this, then if he does take, then he's basically trapped. Yep, go there, goes there, king comes here. He can't come out because he'll get taken. I think that's the way that that works. But if we did go there, he can come here attacking the king. And he's got a two on one on the pawn. With the bishop. But that might not work. That's the only minus sign to that there. Puts a check on the king, king moves, and he wins the pawn. But let's stay away from that and just hit the knight with this pawn. It's good to talk it through. Delicate end game. The like end games where people would offer a draw over the board and because they don't want to go through the pain. We need to practice these because these are when I'm looking at the higher rated players playing over the board. These are the moments where they start shining. Yeah, they kind of welcome the offer of a draw because they say to themselves, right. This person doesn't know how to do the end game. They're scared of it. So let's show them how to play chess. We've got a pawn majority. In fact, we're plus one, you know. Got a pawn majority. So maybe we can start pushing the pawn majority up a little bit. Try and put a little bit of sting in there. Let's hit the bishop. Okay, right. We keep moving the bishop. Probably get this white square bishop. Try and get that knight off the board. How do we do that? Here, here, but he's just going to block that off, isn't he? Let's go here. 
I can see him just dropping this pawn. And the knight doesn't have to stay there anyway because we don't have an x-ray through even if we did get it in. Maybe these should start jumping onto white squares. Yeah, beating us to the punch. Let's just um, see if we can get this knight off. Push, push, push. But then it's got no weight, has it? No rush, no rush. Just react to what is hap actually, actually happening on the board. Don't let my calculation run away with me. Try and find those better positions. Might be just a simple waiting move like this, but doubling the pawns, getting that knight off the board is working for me. Psychologically, that's working for me. So we can come here now and look to see if we can do some of this. Maybe get a passer. Bishops of the same color, probably going to... Let's push. And let's just, I'm thinking, just savouring the fact that we do have the poor majority on this side. And push. Because if we take, take, then it's kind of locked it all in. Yeah, it's a bit sad it is on a dark square, but we do have a dark square bishop ourselves. It's just that he can, hopefully he can't come around the back. Let's start moving the king up. Might be a long road to Tipperary, but that type of thing. Maybe blocking the bishop in and then shooting up. Yeah, let's block the bishop in. It's their king. Oh, the king's coming here, isn't it? We're going to have to shoot up and block the king from coming in here. These annoying little trips so he goes warm we go warm but then he beats us oh oh isn't that sickening then he can come down here ah oh, missed the trick there with this silly pawn yeah and the bishop's blocking the way so this pawn's not pushing up Oh, that's a waste, isn't it? That's a waste. Well, we had something there. But I remember um, probably some recent games, and I've watched some games um, in these um, lovely tournaments that we watch. He's got like a 2 on 1 as well, so I'm going to have to push this pawn to support. Even if you've got like a pawn up, or even if you've got like a a knight, a bishop, and some pawns, and it's just that extra bit, but the position on the board, you just can't get in. You know, pieces are locked down. This is like one of those situations. So we're just going to go backwards and forwards with the pawns. So we could push here. Let's, we could push here. But then he can just push there. We're going to run out of moves. We could push this, and then he can just push this. Yeah, we can push there, he can just go like that. There's no major biggie. Let's push this one. Which is there. Push there. It's all locked down. Can't get in. And the king's not moving from that spot ever. So the cases where you're a plus one or plus a minor piece, but the areas are locked down, it's kind of going to end up being a draw. I think I missed tempoed my king move. I missed it. So they're just going to go backwards and forwards with the bishop. We were thinking of doing this, but this pawn is actually protecting here. So we can't do that. Push this one. He 
he said they have a locks down that we can't push this onto here and we're just moving the bishop backwards and forwards I'm now at the stage of thinking like based off of the the first game that we played in this um, session is there a way in with some type of pawn maneuver that I'm missing here yeah so they've gone there but they haven't gone there so are we still thinking of this back in the pawn doesn't have to take I don't think we're getting in anyway are we if he takes we take Takes, we take. Started doubting it, but I'm feeling I don't think we can lose if we've done it wrong. Can just still maintain the draw. I'd rather take that chance. Yeah, I was thinking the bishop can do this, but. King is attacking here. That's the problem, isn't it? Problem, it's a problem. <clears throat> right, they've left the game. They've put so much hard work in. I mean, it's a problem for us. They left that bishop there. None of these pawns are getting promoted. Are they? So it's a draw. He just maintained that bishop here. Is it not? We do have two linked pawns, I suppose. Still, hmm. I'll have to look at the analysis on this one. We felt brave enough to break, try and break the mould. I'm not sure they did the best moves to defend against it, but let's have a look at this one. Let's have a look. I'm very intrigued. I'm very intrigued. Right, okay. Let's, yeah. So draw it all the way to there, to there, to there. I don't need to. Woohoo! Oh, this is that. Hold on. Hold on. So this is the position. So we're winning here. And the king move. And then they're sitting in there. Oh, that's where we were worried about, actually, weren't we? Saying, oh, well, they're going to get in here, but 
This computer's saying we're okay. Saying we're actually winning here. Doesn't like that. Bishop D2. Bishop D2, what is that doing? Bishop D2. So it looks like it's defending this or something. H6. Hmm. I'm not really sure about that one. Okay, so let's continue. So, drawish with a slight tiny advantage, but it's never here nor there. Doesn't like that, makes it a draw. But we had a plan in our head as to what we wanted to do. We were trying to get these obliterated as best possible. Or even on this side as well. I'm just wanting to see the impact. It doesn't like that, but we're still still in the game. And it's not saying that's given us anything. It's saying that's given us something because they didn't have to actually take. So that's what in my head I'm thinking. They don't have to do any of this, so it could just end up being locked down. It's saying A6. Okay, good. Yeah, so at that point then they made a bit of a mistake, but it's did we capitalize on it? It felt like it was going to be okay for us. And like I said, when when I watch the higher rated players play over the board, especially. Yeah, and you see moments like these where there's this end game coming and then the lower rated player offers a draw, you know, thinking, yeah, okay, I'm going to draw against this high rated player. And then the high rated player looks at them and kind of does an inward smile to say, well, no, I, I think I might push it a little bit further just to see if it is a draw. Basically saying, show me. Yep, and inevitably, and the lower rate, lower rated player kind of does end up folding because of the experience or the position on the board isn't as drawish as they think it is. Right, so we're actually winning here at the moment. So it doesn't look like we're doing anything majorly wrong. So I think, based off of the first game that we played today, where we um, we lost on time, but we looked at the analysis and. The smallest of details in terms of the pawn manoeuvres, the king manoeuvres, would have given us an extra advantage in the game if we had followed it through. I thought, well, we'll take a risk and we'll go for it here. We went silent in this game to put the focus and concentration in and see whether or not it was going to work for us. Again, it's all based on what the opponent does, how they respond to these moves. And we took the chance and felt a little bit at home but this was not the right move we are winning here and c6 is better i think we ummed and ah didn't we about doing that we ummed and ah because i'm thinking it's locked down why is that going oh but it's hitting the pawn the bishop's hitting the pawn Does that really help anything? So it's saying bishop g3. Yeah, so if the bishop goes and takes the pawn, he's taking this pawn. Bishop e2. Oh, that's not right. Where is it? King e2. No, I've, no, 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 no. No, I'm sorry, my brain would not compute coming to attack the bishop when their king is centralised here. I'm happy with my king being here. I know it's the computer, but I've got to base it on my own playing style. It's no way made I'm taking my king away from the centre. Yeah, it's stopping the king from coming here. I don't care what the computer's saying. I would not be bringing my king down here to attack the bishop if it was there. Yep. So we'll keep this as a draw at this moment in time. We're attacking and basically 
They could have pushed past, but then we would get a passer here. King could come and attack it, but we'd get a poem of um, a promotion. So it is saying a taking. So I'm fairly happy with that. I'm thinking, well, we've got an extra pawn, so maybe we should be able to do something about that. But um, if they kept that diagonal, we probably would st struggle. So they kept it there for a minute. I'm now looking to see if I can get exploded on the other side. It does take, it does take. Bishop b2. It's attacking the pawn again, which it does do. So it's doing the right move. Bishop f6. No, so we're pushing the pawn. So it's drawish at this point in time. Hmm. And that's when it stopped, but it's saying next move for them, bishop f6. It's blocking this pawn and it's stopping the pawn from going further up. Yeah, so that would have been a nice one for them. Stopping the linked power. Bishop f4 for us, so just going backwards and forwards, attacking the pawn here. h5. King e3. King e3 now, just to go and attack the pawn. Yeah, so it is a draw, really. The opponent just... Um, they left the game 